Today, I'm playing clear golf balls. What's happening, Panda Nation? Peter Von Panda out here on the golf course, and today I thought I would try these golf balls. I was actually watching the Live Golf Tournament, and Charles Schwartz, I think that's his name, the winner, had a hat on, and I kept seeing clear golf on his hat, so Googled it, found out that this company actually makes golf balls. And honestly, it was good enough to win the Live Golf Tournament, which is the premier tournament in the world, right? So I thought I would check them out. Now, Finding information on these is actually pretty hard. I picked these up. These are the green, noted by the green box, but I also think they have a black. And it seemed to me that the black was the higher compression tour level golf ball. And this might be like a slightly lower compression, or maybe a little softer, a little more spinny, those kinds of things. So I kind of equate it to maybe the black is like the Pro V1 and these are maybe like the Tour Speed. So um, picked up a box of these. They aren't cheap. They're like $55 a dozen. So they're definitely not a discount ball, but give them a try all right so one of the interesting things about this is that like i said i didn't have a lot of specs so i don't know what compression these are maybe these are 60 70 80 and one of the things that they did have on their website which i thought was interesting is that this has tungsten powder in it not only in the core but also in the cover and that adds some weight kind of gives it a little bit different density i don't know if that is actually kind of commonplace for golf ball manufacturers to add that but I had never seen that in anyone's description before. It does have a kind of a cool logo though, huh? Clear right there. That's kind of what actually turned me on to them. As far as I can tell, I mean, they feel just like your standard urethane cover. Dimple pattern looks pretty similar. We do have an alignment line there. The clear logo, pretty big. Black and green so you know which golf ball it is. And then nothing else. So if you like those alignment lines, you definitely have that. So we'll cut this bad boy open and look inside because that's the obligatory thing to do. And everyone just cuts them open and shows them to you like a hot second and that's it. And everyone gets exactly what they expect and there's no surprises. So I am really hoping that today there is like a half born bird embryo or something in this ball because that would be awesome. And we would have something super super surprising in fact the only other thing that could be really surprising here is if the core is way off center right then we'd be like oh the quality control so let's go ahead and look at it and see what we got oh my god new guys in the corner puking his guts out all because you want to save a few pennies look at that oh <laughs> well i will tell you what Look at that tungsten powder in there, and look how centered that is. Now, of course, you could cut it the other way. Just because it's centered like this doesn't mean it's not off-center the other way, right? And so, ooh, it's hard. All right. I can't put my fingernails into it. It kind of feels like an old, dried-out pencil eraser, and it's pink. You can also see that there is a layer right there, a layer right there, and then a very thin urethane cover. So this is a four-piece golf ball. How about that? Now, I don't like to waste anything here, so what we're going to do is we're just going to line that back up. I'm going to super glue with this back together and play with it because that shouldn't harm the performance of the ball at all. <laughs> I'm just kidding. You know what I'm saying? Boom. 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 Right there. That's what you get when you cut a ball open. Well, that was a big waste of time. All right. Let's get on the course and see what we think of this. Now, I don't know about you, but I don't even really understand some of the terms that people use when they are reviewing golf balls, like clicky. I guess it means it kind of ticks when it comes off the face of the putter. I feel like that depends a lot on the putter. I would not say that these balls honestly feel clicky to me. They feel actually pretty springy to me, and I guess maybe that's the lower compression. Although on a putt, I don't really see how you're going to test that very much, but the material, the urethane cover certainly makes a ticking sound coming off the putter face, but I also use the Mez 1, which just has that milled front face, so it doesn't have any inserts or anything like that, but I really did feel like they sprung off the face pretty well, and it was really easy to lag these balls as much as it is any other ball, so sometimes I have to kind of relearn distances, but with these, they play just like Pro V1s. Now here I am teeing off with a hybrid using that clear golf ball. And again, it feels nice off the face. I don't really like a stiff high compression golf ball, but I would say that this felt pretty nice. And then hitting it off the fairway on my second shot with that same hybrid seemed to fly right in line with where I was aiming, which is actually pretty nice too. So the consistency of manufacturing is paying off there and I was able to put it onto the green. Now this was actually maybe one of my best drives of the day, even though it fell to the right side of the fairway here. GPS 
CBS Watch said it was a 231 yard drive. This is a very flat hole here. And that actually puts it kind of in the upper range of what my good drives would be here. So was able to hit an iron into the green and oh, carry the green a little bit. So the clear golf ball seems to fly as well as anything. So ended up with the ball on the back of the green here, kind of on the back sloping side of the hole. I am actually going to pull a 60 degree wedge out here, which you might be saying, well, Pete, that is going to give it a ton of flight here really pop that ball up and that was my hope i was going to do a square to square uh, pitch here and just kind of hope to sit it right on the flag stick so let's see how it goes i am amazing that clear golf ball was only about two feet from the pin now here on this longer par four went ahead and hit the big dog and put it right in the middle of the fairway there again about 230 yards out here this was actually my best drive of the day and even though i put it just inside the left rough just about a foot off of the fairway it was a 244 yard drive so best ball of the day i usually don't break the 240 mark out in the real world and so the clear golf ball is definitely doing its thing. So I'm actually going to replay this shot and crank up the volume so that you can hear the comments from the guys playing with me because I think it's a testament to how good these clear golf balls are. Ah, look at that. That's beautiful. That was incredible. I think we got it on film. My last drive had nice carry, but put me in the right rough, actually beyond that part of the fairway. So use the hybrid and the ball came out like a rocket and actually put me in position to score pretty well in this hole. The reality for me is that I'm not a good enough or a consistent enough golfer to really tell you the difference between premium golf balls and really bad golf balls. But I will say that these golf balls performed very well. I actually had a pretty good round that day. I will credit the golf ball with some of that. They seem consistently made and they feel pretty good despite the higher compression. So someone like me who really likes golf balls that are in that 60 compression range, I've even played the Wilson Duo Professionals, which I think are in the 40 or 50 range. These these did not feel awful. They actually felt pretty good and they played and felt just like Titleist Pro V1s to me. So that's actually a compliment to these because I don't really play Pro V1s unless I am really trying to squeeze every ounce out of my game. And usually giving up a few yards with the Chrome Softs or softer golf balls just helps me enjoy the round a little bit. But I will say that I played these without a problem, never had to flinch, they never felt bad. I felt like they felt good off of the putter face as well. And they were as good as any golf ball I have ever played. Now, they are as expensive or more expensive than Pro V1s. I think you can get a dozen of Pro V1s for something like $50. So at $55, they aren't cheap. If you want a golf ball that's a little different, that's as good as anything I've ever played, then these might be it. But for the average golfer like me, I'm probably going to stick with my Chrome Softs. Hey, if you want to pick up these or Chrome Softs, I'll put a link to them in the description below. Peter Von Panda, out. We can discover more Explore so much deeper We can live better than everything